My name is Michael Anthony, and until his death, I was executive secretary to John Beresford Tipton, a multi-billionaire who had the strange hobby of giving away one million dollars tax-free to an individual who had never met him, who indeed had never even heard of him. This is Silverstone, John Beresford Tipton's 60,000 acre estate. Mr. Tipton was a man of amazingly wide interests, so wide that one never knew what to expect when called into his presence. You sent for me, sir? Mike, what product do you think of when Pennsylvania is mentioned? Well, sir, coal, I guess. <laughs> right. Now, this is our next millionaire. He lives in the little coal town not far from Scranton. But what does Dr. Alan March have to do with coal? Dr. March's people were coal miners. But right now, he seems to be having trouble deciding his place in the world. Perhaps that check will help him make up his mind. Yes, sir. Dr. Alan March was the son of a coal miner. His story was a very human one, because Alan March was a very human kind of doctor. Well, when did it happen, Nora? I see. Well, I'll be right out. Just tell Sam to try and relax. Where are you off to, Alan? How's it called? Nora Blaine just found. What's wrong with Nora? Well, not Nora, Sam. Mule kicked him a couple of days ago. And he waited until now to call? Mm, you're not Sam. Say, have you got those x-rays of Coney? They're in my left-hand drawer. Oh. trying to do, Sam? Get Nora to pay you some attention? You two have a fight or something? Almost did, Alan. Big Lug wouldn't let me call a doctor. Ah, uh, he's just trying to build it up, that's so. all. Where'd the mule fit you? Right side, quack. Beneath the ribs. You know, I feel sorry for that mule. He probably fractured his leg. Oh. You darn fool, why didn't you call me right away? Figured it was nothing. Same lug that played the last quarter against Scranton High with a broken shoulder. I know. Have to make you look good carrying that ball, Alan. Come on, come on, Quack. Give me the pill and let's get this over with. You're going back to the clinic with me right away. Where's your phone, Nora? I'll make arrangements. In the hall. Is it bad, Alan? Straight now. I wouldn't kid you. Got a ruptured spleen. And the symptoms paradinitis has set in. Oh, Alan. That'll be my best kid. Third down, goal to go. Time? Always time to win a game. Call the signals, boy. You call him.
Mrs. Blaine here? Tell her I'm not in. Go ahead, say it. You did your best. But was it good enough? No surgeon could have done more. I stop it, Frank. You know it was my fault. Oh, what on earth is the matter with you, boy? I was in the room with you. Watched every movement. It was a brilliant job. Operation success, patient dead. Of his own foolishness for not calling you in time. No, Frank, it's no use. It wasn't Sam's fault. It was mine. Believe that, and you're through as a surgeon. But it's the truth. I got nervous when I neared the artery. You were cool and precise as a machine. Al and I was watching. Nothing could have saved Sam. He was a terminal case before you made the incision. I am sorry, Nora. I know, Alan. I guess we just both loved him too much. I just wanted to tell you, I know you tried. Please don't blame yourself. I will never touch a scalpel again. You can't mean that. Oh, yes, yes, I do, Frank. Alan, we've all been through this sort of thing. Why, there isn't a doctor. Doctor? Fine doctor I turned out to be. You are a fine doctor. But what's more important, you're a brilliant surgeon. And surgical talent is very rare. Frank, didn't you hear me? I will never touch a scalpel again. You've been working too hard ever since you came back. Now, why don't you take some time off and sort of think it over? See it in perspective, huh? I'll be all right. Oh, of course you will. <laughs> uh, by the way, who's Linda? What did you hear about Linda? Well, I... I saw her picture when I was looking for Koenig's x-rays. She's just the girl I met while I was interning in Philadelphia. Really? You never told me about her before. There wasn't much to tell. Is that why you keep her photograph? All right, Frank. Linda was more than just another girl. But that's all in the past. I realized before it was too late that Linda and I belong in, well, in two different worlds. If you don't mind, I'd rather not talk about it. No, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be nosy. Alan, remember what I said. You've got a great gift. Don't let Sam's death throw you. Sorry, but I'm not seeing any more patients today. I suggest you make an appointment with Dr. Keniston. I'm not a patient, doctor. My name is Michael Anthony. I have a gift for you. I'm not interested. I don't believe in giveaways or whatever you're selling. Oh, I'm sure you'll be interested in this. Mr. Anthony, I don't wish to be rude, but I have a great deal on my mind. Perhaps this will help you, doctor. You might call it a prescription. It's a cashier's check for a million dollars, tax-free. It's yours, Doctor, on one condition. That you sign this document pledging yourself not to divulge the amount of this check or how you got it. If you tell anyone except your wife, should you marry, you will, of course, forfeit the money. One of us does need a prescription. <laughs> I think not. All you have to do is sign this document. 
who would want to give this to me? The donor must remain anonymous, Doctor. I can assure you he has his reasons, even though I don't know exactly what they are myself. Prescription. It's an escape. Boss, you won't change your mind about quitting. Sorry, Frank. I realize now I made a mistake coming back to Landville. I'll always be grateful to you for putting me on here, but... Well, this is my hometown. I'm too close to everybody here. Where will you go? I don't know. Maybe I'll forget about being a doctor altogether. Now, that's preposterous, and you know it. Is it, is it, Frank? You know very well, to practice medicine, especially surgery, takes... Well, it takes more than technical knowledge and skill. It requires a certain kind of emotional equipment. It's pretty obvious I don't have it. I told you last night, every doctor's been through what you've been through at one time or another. That may be true. But I never can go through it again. Goodbye, Frank. And thanks for everything. Goodbye, Alan. Whatever you do, good luck. glad you all could come. It's a lovely party, and it may be Cheeto's last one for a while. Have fun. <laughs> Alan, it's so good to see you again, after all this time. I didn't know you were having a party, Linda. What's well, in honor of your return, darling? Oh, I was hoping we could be alone. All right. We'll be alone. I can't understand anyone ever wanting to leave this city. Look at it, Alan. Look at the lights. Beautiful. You know, Mother and Dad haven't been home three months in the last two years. What they get out of chasing all over Europe, I'll never understand. Maybe they're running away from themselves. Maybe. You'd know more about those things than I would. Now, would I? Wouldn't you? I didn't think I had a chance, Linda. You might have taken the trouble to find out. I couldn't compete. What on earth does that mean? Well, after all, you are Linda Kendall. So? Well, the Kendalls are the Kendalls. Tell me, when you took my blood sample that day in the hospital, did you notice it had any particular color to distinguish it from the rest of the patients? Well, if I'm mixed up, it's all your fault. Then let's get unmixed. How long will you be in Philadelphia? Oh, indefinitely. Maybe I can compete now. Oh. Whatever happened to that cute idea of yours, or how'd you phrase it to go back to your own kind of people? Didn't work out, then. I should think not. Your own kind of people. How snobbish can one get? Please, Linda. Darling, don't look so crushed. How do you think I felt when you walked out on me? Now, you're twisting it all around. Then untwist me. Snob. 
Then you'll be uh, opening an office here in Philadelphia. No. No? Why not? Linda, I came into some money. Quite, quite a bit of money. Oh, I wasn't under the impression that you studied medicine merely to make money. I'll be honest with you, Linda. A patient of mine, a guy I went to school with, died on the operating table. I'm sorry. I should think that that's the kind of thing that you have to learn to expect when you become a doctor. Yeah, that's just the point. I can't accept it. Alan, you're not giving up medicine altogether. That's ridiculous. Of course you're broken up about the death of an old friend, but don't you see? That's what's wrong. The fact that he was an old friend. You never should have gone back home. Darling, that's like being doctor to your own family. I'm afraid it's a little deeper than that. Oh, but you can't quit that easily. Alan, open an office here in Philadelphia. You'll see, with new patients, people that aren't your close friends, things will be different. You'd rather it were a smaller wedding. Oh, no, whatever you'd like, Linda. Alan, what's wrong? Did I take too much for granted that night on the terrace? Now, don't you ever say that. That was one of the most beautiful moments of my life, to know that you love me. Well, then what, Alan? What's wrong? <sighs> this. What's wrong with this? Doling out sedatives, tranquilizers, stomach aches, to overfed, self-indulgent, I'm sorry, Linda. Your friends are nice people, but most of them have about as much wrong with them as you could cure with a spoonful of baking soda or a little, little housework. Then why accept them as patients? I spent a fortune equipping these offices, including a gold sign on the door outside, Alan March, M.D. I can't very well turn them away until I've at least looked them over. But you did turn down Helen Forsyth's mother. Well, that was different. She required surgery. So? I told you, Linda, no surgery. Darling, you're going to have to come to grips with that sooner or later. Let's not talk about it. Yes? What? Dr. Kennington here? Well, send him right in. Linda, would you excuse me? You can go out that door. I'll see you for dinner? Of course. Why did you bring the x-ray to me, Frank? Would you say the patient is operable? Yes, I'd say he has a chance. A very slight one, but with the right surgeon. Frank, whose x-ray is this? Mine. Sorry. Alan, I want you to do it. Oh, no, Frank, I couldn't. There are any number of good men, really good men. Why me? Because I've got confidence in you. Frank, please don't ask me to operate on you. Now, listen, Alan. Do you think that I'm idiot enough to risk my own life just to prove a point? Now, in my book, you're a great surgeon. I'm putting my life in your hands because I believe in those hands. You may believe in my hands, but... I no longer believe in myself. You must, Alan. For my sake, as well as yours. We're leaving together for Landville on the morning plane. You'll be performing the operation in Landville, then? Frank prefers it that way. As a matter of fact, so do I. Who'll take care of your office here? Where are you going? There won't be an office here. What do you mean? I'm staying on in Landville. I see. Back to your own kind of people, is that it? Oh, Linda, I'm not a society doctor. I belong back in the coal towns. They need me. 
coal miners like my dad, the people I grew up with, don't you understand? You tried that before. It was a mistake. No, no, the mistake I made was not, not having the backbone to see it through. You were right on the terrace when you accused me of running away. Now, one way or another, I guess I've been running all my life. And now I'm ready to face it. What about... What about us? What about us? It's up to you. Linda, you come with me. We can be married in Landville. We'll have a good life, I promise you. Do you expect me to give up all this? My city, my friends, my family? For a coal town? No, no, I guess not. That would be asking too much. I've always realized we came out of two different worlds. I guess we belong in two different worlds. training with the Red Cross. She's kind of dumb about a lot of things, but she's awfully willing to learn. Is this the Linda Kendall from the other world? No. It just wasn't any world without you, darling. No world at all. Then we'll make one of our own. I was executive secretary to John Beresford Tipton, a multi-billionaire who had the strange hobby of giving away one million dollars tax-free to an individual who had never met him, who indeed had never even heard of him. This is Silverstone, John Beresford Tipton's 60,000-acre estate. Mr. Tipton was a man of amazingly wide interests, so wide that one never knew what to expect when called into his presence. You sent for me, sir? Mike, what product do you think of when Pennsylvania is mentioned? Well, sir, coal, I guess. <laughs> right. Now, this is our next millionaire. He lives in the little coal town not far from Scranton. But what does Dr. Alan March have to do with coal? Dr. March's people were coal miners. But right now, he seems to be having trouble deciding his place in the world. Perhaps that check will help him make up his mind. Yes, sir. Dr. Alan March was the son of a coal miner. His story was a very human one, because Alan March was a very human kind of doctor. When did it happen, Nora? 
I see. Well, I'll be right out. Just tell Sam to try and relax. Where are you off to, Alan? House call. Nora Blaine just found. What's wrong with Nora? No, not Nora, Sam. Mule kicked him a couple of days ago. And he waited until now to call? Mm, you know, Sam. Say, have you got those x-rays of Coney? They're in my left-hand drawer. Oh. trying to do, Sam? Get Nora to pay you some attention? You two have a fight or something? Almost did, Alan. Big Lug wouldn't let me call a doctor. Ah, uh, he's just trying to build it up, so... Where'd the mule fit you? Right side, quack. Beats the ribs. You know, I feel sorry for that mule. He probably fractured his leg. Oh. You darn fool, why didn't you call me right away? Figured it was nothing. Same lug that played the last quarter against Scranton High with a broken shoulder. I know. Does it make you look good carrying that ball, Alan? Come on, come on, Quack. Give me the pill and let's get this over with. You're going back to the clinic with me right away. Where's your phone, Where I'll make arrangements. In the hall. Is it bad, Alan? Straight now. I wouldn't kid you. Got a ruptured spleen. And the symptoms paradinitis has set in. Oh, Alan. That'll be my best kid. Third down, goal to go. Time? Always time to win a game. Call the signals, boy. You call him. surgeon could have done more. I stopped it, Frank. You know it was my fault. Oh, what on earth is the matter with you, boy? I was in the room with you. Watched every movement. It was a brilliant job. Operation success, patient dead. Of his own foolishness for not calling you in time. No, Frank, it's no use. It wasn't Sam's fault. It was mine. Believe that, and you're through as a surgeon. But it's the truth. I got nervous when I neared the artery. You were cool and precise as a machine. Al and I was watching. Nothing could have saved Sam. He was a terminal case before you made the incision. 